Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Tonight I thought I was going to be editing the final part of Going Nuclear, but no, Elon Musk had to come up with an awesome and fascinating piece of news that's absolutely worth talking about. So yes, we're back to Texas and SpaceX's um, you know, work down there. At Boca Chica, well, the lower stage or the lower part of the stage has been worked on a whole lot. They put in new bulkheads and domes, they put up scaffolding. Meanwhile, the nose cone that fell over has, however, lagged anguished laying on its side in the tent and uh, it, I think it's been so embarrassed that right now they're actually closing off the ends of the tent. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe they're going to perform some sort of you know surgery that it's embarrassing. Regardless, that is being developed but the main thing that I'm going to talk about is that Elon Musk posted pictures of the first Raptor engines which are traveling to the McGregor facility to the new engine test stand. Now the Raptor engine is their next generation engine that runs on methane and liquid oxygen and it is a trailblazer in terms of the technology. A big part of the success of SpaceX has come down to Tom Muller's Merlin engine, which started out as a very simple design. It used gas generator cycle, it had ablative nozzles, pintle injectors, but you know, over time they evolved it and they enhanced it. And the engine today now is more than twice as powerful as the ones they first started with. But Raptor is a complete clean slate and it is pushing the limits on technology. It's using something called a full flow staged combustion cycle which has only previously been seen in two engines the Soviet RD270 and the US's integrated powerhead demonstrator. Both of those did reach tests but they never made it into a production vehicle that flew. So if Raptor flies it will be a world's first. But many of you right now are asking what the heck is a full flow staged combustion cycle? And to explain that, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of a lesson in rocket science. With rockets, you know, you're basically trying to pump fuel into the combustion chamber where it burns. But to actually pump the fuel in, that's a big part of the rocket design. So in the Merlin, that is called a gas generator cycle. In the Merlin, what they do is they burn a bit of fuel with a bit of oxidizer and that creates a flame. And then that exhaust runs through a turbine. It drives a turbine, which then drives the pumps. Now the exhaust from that is dumped overboard. The, um, pre, this is called the pre-burner and the pre-burner runs fuel rich because you don't want the turbine to get too hot so you run it with a bit more fuel, a bit less oxygen and that means the exhaust is very dark and very sooty but it's not as hot. Unfortunately when you dump it overboard that wastes a bit of energy and so the engine isn't as efficient as could be. Now for comparison the Russian RD-180 is the engine that powers the Atlas rockets and in that they are able to reclaim some of the performance by taking the exhaust from the pre-burner and piping it back into the combustion chamber. Now this isn't easy because the combustion chamber is under pressure so the entire pump system ends up under higher pressure and in that situation that fuel rich exhaust it will actually start to gum things up, it'll uh, start to form polymers. So instead the pre-burner on the RD-180 is oxygen rich. Of course, oxygen rich exhaust really love to burn holes in metals, which meant the Russian scientists, the Soviet scientists that designed this, they had to come up with new metals to actually solve this problem. But in the end they managed to do it and the RD-180 is in fact more efficient than the Merlin engine, at least in terms of specific impulse. The Merlin, however, does have a higher thrust to weight ratio, so it gets more thrust out of the same you know, massive engine. The Raptor has two pre-burners. On one side, the oxygen is being pumped into the engine using an oxygen-rich pre-burner powering a turbine, powering the, the pump. On the other side, the methane is being pumped into the engine using a fuel-rich pre-burner. And one of the first advantages is here is that you can eliminate the seals between the pumps and the um, turbine blades. So that's one way. All of the propellants then flow through the entire engine, through the entire segment, and they all end up getting partially burned. And this is good because they all end up being converted to gases but so that by the time they reach the combustion chamber, everything going in is a gas. And this means that the fuel and the propellant, uh, the fuel and the oxidizer mix very, very efficiently and very rapidly, which is a problem. Rocket engines 
usually are spraying like liquid oxygen and kerosene into the chambers and they have to come up with all sorts of clever injector designs to try and take the, the droplets of liquid and smash them down, atomize them, mix them so that they can burn before they are ejected out of the back of the combustion chamber. And these injectors, they will actually reduce the amount of pressure or they'll take energy away because you have to force the fluids through. So by having gases going into the system, you eliminate that and get a bit more efficiency. So, you know, this is good because both of these improve efficiency overall. But also because all of the oxidizer and the fuel flow through the entirety of the engine, that means the pressures don't actually need to be as high because the flows are much greater. And because the flows are much greater, the temperatures are lower. So you get lower pressures, lower temperatures, and that means the engine is much less stressed and therefore it really helps with reusability. And of course, that's something that's really critical to the SpaceX design. But of course, the downside to this is that it's vastly more complicated. If you want to test the pump system on a Merlin engine, you don't need the rest of the engine. You just hook up the pump, the pre-burner, fire it up and throw away the exhaust. If you want to test the pump system on the Raptor, well, guess what? The oxidizer side depends upon the fuel side. They're both kind of heavily interlinked and the pressures all need to be balanced. So it takes a lot more effort to actually build up and test such a system. But they did build a subscale test Raptor engine. And this is much smaller. It has a thrust of one mega Newton, which is about 100 tons. But according to Elon, the full size model that he's shown has a thrust of about 200 tons or two mega Newtons. But this is a long way from the three mega Newtons that they suggested back in 2016. So they've taken a bit of a step back. Still, they have suggested that there will be improvements made and that we, we will eventually see a 250 uh, ton thrust version for a first stage and a high efficiency vacuum version with a specific impulse of about 380, 382. Anyway, one thing that has appeared to have disappeared from SpaceX chat is the 300 bar chamber pressure that Elon talked about or suggested might be possible. Uh, Sounds like that may not be possible, but then again, you know, they did evolve the Merlin engine by such a big factor. I won't be surprised if we see improvements with, to Raptor over time. Still, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting them to get that high just yet. Oh yeah, and that dual bell nozzle theory that, uh, you know, I spent a long time talking about, I'm starting to think that that isn't happening. And the reason is it was very obvious when they took the placeholder Raptor engines out that the nozzles that they had on them, they had nozzle extensions that were more or less just hanging there. They hadn't been welded in place. They just pushed these up out of the way. And so it was very obvious that the change in curvature was entirely because they had hastily put a sheet of metal around it in the approximate shape and size of the Raptor nozzle. So I'm thinking that the you know different curve, you know, thrust adaptive nozzles may not happen, but you know, we might see it eventually. Maybe we will get different designs later, but I'm not seeing this on Starship version one right now. Also for comparison, Blue Origin, they are also developing the methane liquid oxygen engine, the BE4. Um, the only number I can see on that is it has a thrust of 2.4 mega Newton. So that's about 250 tons of thrust. Um, so that's higher thrust than the Raptor, but then again, they're already talking about being able to get up to that thrust. It is a staged combustion cycle. It's probably not going to run as cool and, ef and efficient as the Raptor, but it's going to be slightly easier to develop. So, you know, I'm obviously looking forward to them actually testing these new larger engines on the test stand. And this is uh, at McGregor rather than Boca Chica where they're building this thing. So you've got to understand there's two different test sites for SpaceX right now. So yeah, Raptor engine, Boy, these pictures look amazing. I really just wish I could get in and look at these and examine the plumbing and figure out the secrets. But of course, you know, SpaceX doesn't want to do that. And by the way, I'm not really a rocket scientist. I'm just a nerd that loves rockets. So with that, I hope that uh, we see these firing soon. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.